Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. Take my hand and my heart, anoint my head and my mouth, and let there be no gap between your will and my words. Our minds are active, our hearts are receptive. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your desire to impart knowledge to your people to use every day of their life. Father, remove any form of destruction that the enemy has set before us to steal your word from our hearts and help us to yield a hundredfold, sixty and thirtyfold. Holy Spirit, I invite you to lead me through the word of God to seek intimacy with Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the anointing upon each one of us. I praise you, Abba Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Father, we thank you as we look into your word tonight. I claim Ephesians 1.18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be entitled in order that you know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Romans 5, 9 reminds us that since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Today, I will be speaking about the precious blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ, the most precious gift our Heavenly Father has given to his church. The whole process, as we read in Leviticus 4, begins with a sacrifice. In Hebrews 9.12, Jesus did not enter by means of the blood of goats and calves. He entered the most holy place once and for all by his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption for us. As said in Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there was no remission for our sins. We may ask why the shedding of blood is needed. The shedding of blood is needed because of Jesus' blood, we can be holy. From the beginning, life symbolized blood. In Genesis 4.10, Abel's blood cried out to God. In Genesis 9, 4, life is in the blood of Jesus. In Deuteronomy 12, 23, blood is life. In Acts 15, 28 and 29, it clearly says, we need to abstain from things offered to idols from blood, from things strangled. Abstain from eating blood and meat. Leviticus 17, 10, 12, blood is sacrifice that makes atonement for our sins. Since sin demands death as penalty, shedding of blood was necessary, a consequence of sin. In the Old Testament, when a sacrifice was offered for the sins of the entire congregation, the Jewish high priest would enter the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement which was one time only each year. And he would carry the blood of sacrificial animals, animals without spot, to sprinkle on the Ark of the Covenant. This blood of animals only offered a temporary forgiveness of sins. The priest would take the blood, dip the bunch of his sops, which he also, it's like a parsley bushy looking plant, which represents faith, and sprinkle the blood seven times. In the scripture, the number seven means finished, completed, divine protection. And for offering the sacrifice, the Jewish high priest had to wear garments as per instructions laid down in Exodus 28, 31 to 35. The robe of the ephod was a frock or tunic, reaching from the neck to below the knees. It has put on over the head for which a hole was left. It had no sleeves, and it would seem that the upper portion about the waist was concealed by the hepod and breastplate, but the lower portion from the waist downwards formed the outer dress of the high priest. 
The robe had no ornament excepting round the bottom where it was fringed with alternate bells and pomegranates. Pomegranates are first mentioned in Exodus 28, 33 to 34 as part of God's instruction for making the priestly garments. Make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn around the hem of the robe with gold bells between them. And the gold bells and the pomegranates are to alternate around the rim of the robe. Pomegranates is also called the king's fruit because it looks like a crown. King Solomon is said to have designed his crown based on that of the pomegranate and the image of the fruit often appears on ancient coins of Judea. The pomegranate is said to have 613 seeds which correspond with 613 Jewish precepts or commandments set out by the Torah, regulating the Jewish way of life. Hebrews 9.4 tells us the Ark of the Covenant had three things. These items are actually symbol of man's rebellion. The gold jar of manna represents man's rejection of God's provision. The rod of Aaron represents man's rejection of God's leadership. And the two stone plate tablets of God's commandment represents man's rejection of his standard of holiness. But because God delights in mercy, he had these items put away in the Ark of the Covenant and covered with the mercy seat. The mercy seat had two cherubim known as God's eyes on it. The sin power has been broken in Hebrews 10, 16. This is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. Truly, we may think, if God is merciful, why sacrifice? Sacrifice is the shadow of true realities. They do not perfect the worshipper or remove the consciousness of sin. We cannot ever get rid of our sins. Only Jesus did. He takes away the first to establish the second. As it says also in Hebrews 1 to 14, for the law, having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then, would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshippers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin every year. In the new covenant, we have a direct relationship with God, the Father, and his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We are not perfect people. We are in constant need of help. Our covenant with God is not based on perfection in our life. It's based on the perfection of the life of Jesus. And because his sacrifice is perfect and he is perfect, we who are in Christ Jesus have perfect standing forever before God. One day, John the Baptist was out ministering. He saw Jesus coming and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. John knew that Jesus was the sacrifice that God told Abraham about. Jesus was God's Lamb. When he died on the cross and shed his blood, 
It is said in Hebrews, event once and for all in the Holy of Holies with his own blood to secure a complete everlasting release from our sins. His blood put an end to the old system of sacrificing blood again and again every year. We can live with the confidence that all our sins, past, present, future, have all been washed away. This is the power of the blood of Jesus. When Jesus hung on the cross, suspended between heaven and earth, he took all our mistakes, our failures, and he forgave us. The good news is our Lord has already forgiven us. The Lamb of God has taken away the sins of the world. This sacrifice will not do you any good if you don't receive it. If you go around guilty, condemned, and trying to pay God back for your mistakes, remember, the price has already been paid. All you have to do is receive his forgiveness, receive his mercy, receive his love. The accuser will always tell you just the opposite. God is not going to forgive you. Look what you have done. You knew how to live, yet you failed. So many lies of the devil. And it's easy for us to believe and go around with heaviness in our heart with no passion for life. But just thank God for his mercy. Thank God, Abba Father, I'm forgiven. I'm redeemed. Do you think your mistake was too much for the blood that Christ shed for you? Do you think what you have done has tipped the scales and now God is offending with you? Just remember, you are redeemed by the most precious blood of the sinless, spotless, all-powerful son of the living God. Let us sacrifice, not go waste. <clears throat> The blood that defeated the enemy. The blood that crushed Satan's head. The blood that took the keys of death and hell. The blood that caused demons to tremble at the name of Jesus. It is the same blood that opened blind eyes, cured the lepers, walked on water and calmed the seas. The same blood that restored the woman caught in adultery. And it's the same blood that forgave the people that crucified him. No mistake you have made is too much for Jesus to bring you out of the kingdom of darkness. Shake off that guilt. Remember the forgiveness. For you are precious. You are the apple of his eye. You are washed and redeemed by his precious blood. And your sins are permanently washed away. 2 Corinthians 5.19 For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sin against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Too many people live condemned, always thinking about their past mistakes and asking God to forgive them every day for the same mistake. They don't realize the first time you ask God for forgiveness, he forgave you and blotted it out forever. If God can let it go, why don't you forgive yourself and move on with life? As long as you keep looking backwards, living in regret, beating yourself up over the past mistake, you will never step into the future that God has in store for you. It's very easy to look into the rear view mirror, thinking about what you could have done better, what did not work out. Do you know why the rear view mirror is so small and the front view shield is so big? It's because it's not important where you have been, but it's very important to where you are going. So get rid of that rear view mirror for you have been redeemed and restored. 
God just did not cover your sins. He blotted them out completely. He's not holding them against you. Isaiah 44, 22. The Lord reminds us that he has blotted out like a thick cloud our transgressions and as a cloud our sins. So return to him for he has redeemed us. When the Lord says he will not remember our sins anymore. Likewise, you have to stop remembering what God has forgotten. Stop bringing up that sin, what's already evaporated. Think of your mistakes and your failures like a thick fog. When you wake up, you can hardly see that neighbor's house because of the fog. But when the sun comes up and burns the fog, the fog does not blow away or move to the next city. It just evaporates. We all made mistakes in our lives. We all made poor choices. Our life is clouded by sin. But when we call out to God to forgive us, his son, Lord Jesus Christ, comes and causes his light to shine on us. He covers us completely by his precious blood, thus causing that sin to evaporate. When you dwell on your past, Relieve your mistakes. You are just causing another cloud to fall. God is for you. And the enemy is against you. God has given you a choice to choose. Which direction are you going to go? Believe the lies. Live guilty, thinking you're no good for God to accept you. Or knowing the true fact that God has redeemed you by shedding his precious blood for you and paid the price for your sin. We are not saved because of what we can do for God, but because of what God has done for us. He has paid the ultimate price to set us free. He has forgiven us of our sins, no matter how deadly they are. He has lavished his grace upon us, he has revealed to us, his children, the mystery of his plan to unite heaven and earth. He has called each one of us by name. We belong to him and let us unite with one another through his precious blood and come close to Jesus. Ephesians 1, 7, God has already accepted you, blotted out your sins. He has already shed his blood. Put your shoulders back. Hold your head high. Let the Son of God shine in your daily life. Receive, receive, receive his love and mercy. After all that Christ has done for us, the incredible price he paid on the cross, it does not bring him any honor if you go around condemning yourself and feeling guilty and unworthy. Believe in Jesus. Trust God for his plan. The sacrifice has already been made by our Lord Jesus Christ. When you say, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. By faith, we can say, I put the blood of Jesus Christ all over my house, all over my family, all over my workplace. When the enemy comes, and he sees that bloodline, he does not have a choice. He has to pass over. I'm not saying negative things will not happen. I'm saying because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you have a hedge of protection over you and your family. As long as you keep the blood of Jesus over your life, sickness, defeat, all negative things will have to pass. You are protected by his precious blood. When you have accepted the sacrifice of Christ's salvation, that is a place of protection. Isaiah 54, 17 tells us, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In our lives, we all have destiny moments where we can decide on matters that will set us on a better course. 
to become who we were created by God to be. The son of God himself, assuming human nature, bleeding and dying in our place, itself is a revelation of revelation, the wonder of wonders, the glory of the glorious God. Jesus, being the high priest, shed his blood seven times. Not only did he fulfill the Old Testament requirements of blood sacrifice, but he worked out a total salvation and liberty for us. This is symbolized with the fact that Jesus bled his blood seven times through seven places on his body, which I will narrate more in detail as we learn more on the scripture. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus not only defeated Satan, but took away the keys of death and hell. And 2,000 years later, the same blood of Jesus still speaks to each one of us. When we make a mistake, his blood cries out for mercy. When we are sick, his blood tells us that by his stripes we are completely healed. Father, thank you that you were wounded for our transgressions and by your stripes we are completely healed. Amen. When we need provisions, his blood reminds us that he became poor in order so that we can have enough for our daily living. The blood reminds us daily that we are more than a conqueror in Christ. We can do all things through him. Philippians 4, 11, 13. His blood is still crying for freedom, for our salvation in abundance. The blood makes us aware repeatedly that the forces that are for us are greater than the forces that are against us. When people come against us, we can get upset, try to pay them back, or let the blood of Jesus speak to them. We do not have to live in fear. When we make mistakes in life, we can live guilty and condemned, or let the blood of Jesus speak for us and bring us out of darkness. Father, thank you for your my vindicator. You set the trap the enemy will set for me. They will fall in themselves. Amen. The blood that Jesus shed on the way to Calvary has canceled out every negative seed in our lives. Be it addiction, bad habits, bad temper, spirit of lack, adultery, fornication, pornography, call it whatever negative in your life. Believe the blood of Jesus has been there and it has to be a put a stop. Thank you, Abba Father, for the blood that Jesus shed has canceled every negative thing in our life and we are set free. When we thank God, believe in your heart and declare with your mouth for when you are protected by his precious blood, even the Satan trembles because it reminds them of their defeat. It reminds them what they used to do in the past to you. They cannot do any more harm to you or your body. They cannot touch your family, your business, your work. Because the same precious blood of Jesus has broken every generational curse. What was holding you in the past will hold you no more, for you are set free. The fullness of your destiny is in Jesus' name. Just repent of your sins in your heart and make the Lord your God, your Savior. Come back to him and sin no more. Always, always, always keep God the first place. He is going to take you places you have never dreamt of. There will always be unanswered questions. God would not allow it if he was not going to get anything good out of it. You may not see it for now, but remember, God has always a plan for your future. Just trust in it. At times, we feel our life is in a total mess. We don't know where we are going. Everything around us in circles. Every step we take, we fall down. Every enemy is there standing at our door, knocking with problems every day. 
thought does not take us in a straight line. There will be twists, turns, disappointments, bad breaks, losses, but they are all part of his plan. If you have a conditional trust in God, surely you will get discouraged and begin to think, am I going the wrong way? Yet God will direct your steps. Just trust him, even when you don't understand his ways. Just pray, just believe and rest. Leave it in God's hands. Trust him even when you feel you're going the wrong direction. For his ways are not your ways. Anything you desire to have to make yourself happy, keep in mind that enemy can also use it against you. It is good to be determined and persistent. Let God do what he plans for you in his own time. Don't fight. Don't fight with yourself. Don't fight with the Lord. His plans, his ways are not your ways. If he's not changing things in your life, accept what he has for you. Embrace where you are. Always have a good attitude. Keep a smile on your face, even in difficult moments. Passion in your spirit and a song in your heart. Rejoice and believe this is the day God has made for you. The closed door, the disappointment, the delays is just a test, my friend. It's, it's all working in your favor. God calls you his child and no father will allow his child to be in pain. Every father makes his child know the worth of every thought he does. How much more will our Lord do for us? God wants to see, do we fully trust in him? We live worried and this steals our joy. This keeps us away from seeing God's favor. Trust God. He will not only give you the desires of your heart, he will do more than you can ask of him. We serve a mighty God, a God of unmerited favor. Now let us reflect on the seven stations where Jesus shed his precious blood for us on Calvary. The first station, Jesus bled from his mind through his sweat glands for our emotional and mental mm -hmm. healing. The first place Jesus shed his blood was in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night of the Last Supper with his disciples. Just imagine you are having dinner with your friends and you very well know that one of them is going to betray you and still you love them all. How painful it is. Jesus was under such agony that the capillaries that fed his sweat glands burst and blood flowed from the pores in his skin. Luke 22, 39 to 46 tells us Jesus said, not his will, but the will of the Father be done. The first Adam lost his willpower to Satan in the Garden of Eden. Jesus Christ, the second Adam, shed his blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. Thus, Jesus bought back the willpower of man. Look at it in another way. Maybe you have a bad habit you can't give up. All these lifestyles, drinking, etc., that you were taking you down to a quick hell and destroying your life. Things that you think are pleasure for now and you know it's a big sin. When Jesus was in the garden and spilled his blood, he purchased the ability for God's will to come inside of you. When you don't have the power to overcome your sin, his will came in and now you have the willpower to overcome those things which you couldn't overcome by yourself. Any distraction in life which leads you to the path of hell, call on to the blood of Jesus. Protect yourself for you have the hedge of protection. The second station, the crown of thorns to win back financial blessing and destroy poverty. Jesus's face disfigured, bruised and smashed to win back for us the image of God. The second place where Jesus shed his blood was the bruises and wounds on his face. His face was wounded. They hit his face with a stick in their fits and spat upon his face. 
after fall of man, man lost his image of God. The image of holiness, godliness, purity of the spirit. Jesus brought back this image of God for us. Just visualize in your heart. Think about the pain, the torture and the sufferings our Lord went through just for our salvation. Isaiah 50 to 14, they struck him in the face with fists and rods. Jesus gave his back to the smiters and his cheeks to those that plucked off bunches of his hair. He did not hide his face from shame, humiliation and spitting. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way leaving Jesus alone to take our burdens upon him. We didn't even think even once what we were doing to the Lord. We enjoyed every sin that we committed, not realizing how much our Lord Jesus paid the price on the cross, how much of blood he shed for each one of us to save us. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing him and beating him up. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. They twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews. Yet he opened not his mouth. Every drop of his blood was shed out of his abundant love for each one of us. Imagine ourselves in his place. What would we have done? We can't take a single word spoken to us in our own family today. We forget what Jesus did for us. We are ready to fight back. We are ready to retaliate. We cannot accept any word against our will. But here the Lord does the will of his Abba Father. He did not open his mouth because he knew he was doing it for us. The third station, the stripes on his back to win back our hell. The third place where Jesus shed his blood was at this whipping post where his back was ripped to pieces as he was whipped 39 times according to the Jewish punishment. He took a lash for every book of the Old Testament. There are 39 books in the Old Testament. And he fulfilled the Old Covenant just as he said he came to do. These are just in pictures. And as we have seen this movie, The Passion of Christ, just imagine how real hot those rods could have been when they hit him. How much pain, how much blood. And that was just an act which we saw in the movie. But in reality, how terrible. We get cuts and we scream and shout, but these cuts and bruises were just for us that God underwent. He was accused of blasphemy for saying, I'm able to destroy this temple and rebuild it in three days. For that statement, the high priest Caiaphas, scribes and elders spat in his face and bait him with their fist and others bait him with rods. Imagine you speaking a word and someone spitting at you. How bad you feel. But imagine what Jesus went through every, every minute of suffering. Soldiers jammed a crown of rigid, sharp thorns into his brow and blood began to run into Jesus' eyes and down his body. Every time those Roman soldiers lashed their whips on Jesus, back and blood was spilled he purchased back our ability to have prosperity galatians 3 13 says he became a curse for us at that moment the ground was no longer cursed and the ground returns the blessing the financial struggle the hardships the burdens have been removed from our lives we will never understand the fullness of this covenant of the one we serve until we understand the price he paid for our redemption. 
the fourth station where he shed blood for us, his pierced hands to win back dominion over the things we touch. Jesus' blood was shed from his hands. Imagine the soldiers hammering these two large spikes through his hands to nail him to the cross. How painful it could have been. God placed all authority on the earth in the hands of Adam and Eve. But when Adam disobeyed, that authority was taken away. And Satan became the God of this world. The blood, when it came out of Jesus' hand, revoked that curse, untying our hands, so that now everything we set our hands shall prosper. Colossians 2.14 Christ wiped out the handwriting we set all requirements that was made against us, having nailed it to the cross. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all things that he did to prosper in his hand. Mark 15, 15, and wishing to satisfy the multitude, Pilate released Barabbas for them. And after having Jesus scourged, he delivered him to be crucified. Just imagine our Lord Jesus going on the crucifixion right now. What did we do for him? Have we even thanked him for his mercy, for his love, for his sacrifice? And by his scourging, we are healed. His pierced feet. He shed blood again to win back dominion over the places we walk. Jesus shed his blood when they hit those spikes in his feet. When Adam sinned, he lost the dominion over the earth given to him by God. Man was supposed to be the head and not the tail. Because of Jesus' feet being pierced, he got back dominion and authority. We no longer stumble and wander around aimlessly. Our steps are ordered. We have to sit back and wait for our enemies to become our footstool. Jesus gave us the power to put the devil under our feet. So why can't we claim this authority? Why can't we stop sinning and get rid of our evil habits in the most precious blood of Jesus? Romans 10, 15, how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of they that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. God has created us for a mission. He, his creation in us is not a mistake. We are just not come out of our parents just to live and enjoy our life. Our mission on earth is to go and proclaim the good news. Jesus is still alive in us today. He is working miracles in everyone's life. Trust him, call out his name and see the mighty wonders of our Lord today. He has put all things under our feet. He gave us the dominion over the works of his hands. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of our lives. At times we stumble, we fall, but we know our Lord holds us by his righteous hand. He has given his angels charge over us. He protects us every minute and just, just waiting for us to call on him. The sixth station, his pierced heart won back our joy and his side to win back inner emotional healing. His side was pierced with a spear. John 19, 33, 37. When the soldiers came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. They didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water flowed out. Not only was the outer smashed of Jesus' body once again, now this time his inner part was wounded. After the fall of man continued on a downward way until he became an emotional wreck 
a victim of psychological abuse and hurt, man developed wounded heart, wounded emotions. Many became bitter souls. Man did not only submit to sin, but man then started to suffer under the consequences and pain of sin. All man needs is forgiveness and inner healing. And this inner healing comes from the realization of who our great God is. What price his son has paid for you to get out of your darkness. You are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. Do you not know that? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him for the temple of God is holy and that is what you are. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from Christ Jesus himself? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. You just cannot play anymore with your body. Honor God with it. Honor God for he has created you. Every part of your body is created by God for a purpose. His bruises won back our deliverance from inner hurts and iniquities. What looks like the end and defeat was just the beginning of a victorious life. The blood Jesus shed from the cross paid for the sins of the world, that through him each one of us will be saved. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are all healed today. Psalm 22, 14, 18 says, I am poured out like water and all of my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It's melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt and my tongue cleaves to the top of my jaws. And thou dost lay me in the dust of death for dogs have surrounded me. A band of evildoers has encompassed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look, they stare at me. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. That blood of Jesus Christ purchased your right for healing. The Roman soldiers, they took a cat of nine tails and intertwined with pieces of bone and metal that when lashed across his back would snatch the whip back and pull stripes and ribbons of flesh from his back and ribcage. Our Jesus took it all. He paid the price for our sin. Don't ever think there was something you did that was too bad. Too great for God to forgive you. He already has forgiven you. He's just waiting for you to ask him. And he can't wait to tell you, my child, you're forgiven. Jesus already paid the price for our sins. And the eternal covenant is God putting himself and his ways into us. And now he places the Holy Spirit in us as well. Galatians 3.13, the law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He was the perfect sacrifice, the atonement, the appeasement of God. His blood was shed for you seven times. So you can have rest, my child. You don't have to struggle with sin anymore. You have the Holy Spirit that will help you and give you peace and joy. 
Revelations 1.18, Christ says this from his throne. I am the first and the last and the living one. And I was dead and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and of hates. Look to Jesus Christ. Who leads us in our faith and brings it to perfection. Unite yourselves fully to the Lord. Sharing in his sacrifice on the cross. Offer him that spiritual worship which embraces every aspect of your life. For we have found justification through his blood. And from this blood alone can we be rescued from God's wrath due to our sins. Sin no more, sin no more. The precious blood of Jesus gives us the firm belief that someday we shall all enter into the sanctuary of heaven. Our Lord's hands extended on the cross brings the reconciling power of his sacrifice to the world in which we live. Despite so much suffering Jesus had to undergo, he still loved each one of us so much that he gave his life for us. The very last drop of his blood came forth under the trust of that lance. Blood and water, the sign of the wonder of the Eucharistic sacrifice and the sacrament we celebrate daily at our Holy Mass. As we wait for his second coming, which we do believe the coming is very near. We have the blood of Christ in us. We have royal blood flowing through us. Royal blood is in our veins. We have the life blood of God himself in us. We have the power of Jesus Christ. Express your gratitude. Glorify God. Make your body the shrine of his presence. Father, I want to thank you. For we know all our family members and everyone present here is covered by your most precious blood. Let us close in prayer. Our Father, we want to thank you for the gift of your precious blood. Thank you for revealing your unconditional love to us through your word. Lord, you say where two or three are gathered in your name. You are there in their midst. Thank you for being with us right now. I know many of us have come here with troubled hearts, but all our fears and anxieties have been washed away. Let those who came here with broken hearts leave this place when they are revived and restored. We do know, Lord, the blood you shared for us will not go in vain. We thank you, Lord, because it's through your word that we have found the freedom we have been yearning for. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Thank you, Lord, that we can live in this light and walk in your truth. Help us, Lord, to turn our eyes away from worthless things and focus on Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to continue living and walking according to your word by faith and not by sight. Let us practice what we have learned so that we become like Christ and bear more for us. Let everything we do be in line with your word, Lord Jesus. We ask this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. And in the greatest power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise. Amen. Thank you, Sister. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.